Hello and welcome to another edition of Cracking the Cryptic uh, where today we're going to take a look at the second puzzle from the Times Sudoku Championship 2017. So I've now got hold of the rest of the puzzles and we'll work through them and anyone interested can, can check them out on the site. Um, so without further ado, um, I'm going to use Tom Snyder's notation again and we'll see what we can find that's obvious. Okay, and I've not done this religiously, but I've just I put in the obvious ones and the obvious markings, and you can immediately see something interesting in this bottom left box here, where we've got a place of one, two, three, and five, and actually each of those possibilities appears in exactly uh, two cells, but interestingly the two is left lonely in the central cell, so so this has to be a two. Um, let's put that in if it'll let me. Two. There we go. And in fact, therefore, five can only go here because uh, the cell can only be two or five. Um, so that might be quite helpful. Let's let's just have a look. See if that gives us anything immediate. Well, annoyingly, it doesn't. I don't think the two and the five add up to anything here. But we've now got four, seven, nine to place in row eight. You can see there's a seven here. In um, in column five, so we know there's got to be a seven in one of these two cells, and in fact, seven can only appear here, and that's going to be massively important. Um, because let, let's you let's see how powerful Tom's notation is here. So I'm going to put seven in here. You can see that means the four can only go in one other position. So seven, four, one, six can go in absolutely almost instantly. Um, which is, I mean, that's going to be hugely uh, influential in terms of doing this puzzle quickly. Immediately place a 4 here. It means this has to be a 9. Um, and the only thing this can now be is the 5. And again, that means this is forced to be a 5. And there's going to be a lot of notation to fill in from this. One of the things that actually um, is a little bit irritating about the computer software is that you you really have to be diligent about you know noting down everything you're learning from these um, these possibilities. I actually find it easier when you're working in pencil. Um, uh, it just seems to be more natural to to do it in an orderly way. Um, anyway. See that I think we can fill in this column. I mean, this is. I mean, I think actually the puzzle might just be finished now uh, in terms of all the difficult steps, because you can see it's just falling apart. I'd be very interested to know how quickly this was solved by the guys in the final, because I think if you if you were using this notation, you would have you would have just solved this box very very fast, and then you could see that it, it's. It's just broken the puzzle open. Um, uh, it really is uh, collapsing. And there's another clever thing that Tom's notation throws you out here. So if we look at these top three rows, you can see we've isolated a five in the first three by three box in one of these two positions. And we've isolated a five in one of these two positions in the second box. So again, we should now be familiar with this if you've been following this video series, but we, we know there can't now be a 5 anywhere else in row 1 or row 3. And you can see that there's only two positions a 5 can go in column 8. So in fact, the 5 here has to appear in this position, um, which is a nice a nice get. It allows us also to just scan scanning down to try and see what we might get. We can see that we can place a 2 up here, um, which might be helpful. I don't think it quite is, but it could have been. And you can see uh, if you work, work from this box upwards, because you know we've got all of these numbers in this box, I don't think we can do anything with this column. You can see this column is 2, 6, but you can't limit it further. But if you look at this column, uh, you've got 1, 6, 8, 9 to place. Um, this box we've already got one in it and there's a six nine here so this this eight is forced um, there and, uh, forced 
one, one of these two positions. And again, now I'm scanning across. I'm seeing the five, six in two positions in this box, which means a one cannot appear in this position where, where the cursor is. So the one is in one of four squares in this box, but this, this mech method um, allows us to therefore immediately see that we can a one is in the top three positions of the first three by three box here. So we, we need to note that down, which would be very easy to miss, uh, I think, if you weren't using this sort of notation. Now again, just looking at looking at columns where we we've, we've got numbers placed in, I tend to work with the columns and rows where I've got the most information. So we've got two, three, seven, eight to place in this column, but the seven, eight here is just I mean that's crying out to be used. So we can we can label the two, three, two, three here, which means this has to be seven and an eight. Now, and rather annoyingly, I really want to write that in um, just to make myself remember it for this box, but, but we shouldn't do that. Um, it would be a bit of a uh, hybrid method and um, probably not, not a good thing to get into. But we can now place the nine in the second three by three box here. Um, and that's going to be helpful because this duo one nine means that we can now position the nine in this box in this position. It means that force is an eight here and the seven here. So I didn't have to wait long in order to know that this was a seven, which is what I was what I was after. Uh, and now this I think has to be a two unless I'm missing something. Um, and yeah, I think the puzzle's done basically. And one of the other things we can see here is we've used this 8 and this 8. We've got sort of a nice pattern here with the 8 and the 9 in these two positions and in these two positions. So we know we're locking the 8 and the 9 as shown there, um, which ought to be quite helpful in terms of, so now we've locked a 1 here as well, uh, which forces this to be a 1, which is good. Um, what else can we see? So we've still got um, 237 to place here. So 23, in fact, that's going to be quite interesting too. Now, in fact, there is something a little bit more interesting here. So if we look at this top 3x3 three three box here, where I've managed to place uh, three of the remaining four digits in one of two positions. So strict Tom Snyder notation used. Uh, still got to place a nine, um, so it should be clear to everybody that this cell here, there are only, you know, you you can you can see because of the configuration you already have and the need we, to place a nine, that this cell can only be one and nine. If we scan across the row where this one and nine is, we have another cell here which is only one nine. So in fact. This row is very restricted now, very restricted. We could, we only have to place two, three, eight in this cell, in this row. Now this is already two, three limited. Um, so this cell, in fact, can't be two or three because of the two, three in column two. So I think this cell is forced to be an eight by that logic, um, which means this is an eight and this is a nine, um, which means that this is an 8, this is a 1, and this is a 3. Um, and now we're really cooking with gas. You can see in, uh, in the central row we've got to place 269. Uh, well, this can only be a 2 then, uh, I think. Well, that's 2, that's 7, that's 9, and that's 6. And now I'm very confident this is done. <laughs> Who, um, yeah, so I think we'll stop there. We might see some music to, to take us out, but uh, yeah, uh, interesting puzzle and definitely one I think that if you were using uh, Tom's notation, you had an advantage on. Uh, I think you could have got this out quickly if you were using uh, using this method. Uh, so we'll see you next time for the next puzzle. Thanks for watching.